Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. So here it's gonna get interesting now. Um, we are also in the support area. I do already explained it in the Bitcoin video that the market makes it, let's say, easy for us now in a sense that there is now a very, very clear decision point ahead of us. Yeah, no overlapping support areas anymore um, on the higher time frame. It's really that 12, 18 level here, which is so relevant, uh, which is, you know, while we are heading into this support area deeper, we need to be very much aware that we are now in either really a 1-2 setup here, which is the possibility for Bitcoin as well. Um, and in this wave two, if the market can hold the 12-18 level, it can give us decent upside into the $3,000 plus region in a third wave. Yeah, just to give you an outlook in that scenario, by the way, the overall chart for Ethereum is looking more bullish than Bitcoin. Um, the reason is that in November, it didn't make a new low. While for Bitcoin, I actually have as the primary still to make another low uh, on the chart. For Ethereum, the likelihood is higher to have already seen the bear market low back in June. But still, probabilities are close together here. Depends also on uh, likelihood is if Bitcoin makes a new low that Ethereum would follow. Um, even though that was not the case in November. So just be aware of that. Ethereum has outperformed Bitcoin last year and this year. Um, no, not this year yet, I think, but last year, definitely. Um, so yeah, this is something to watch. Off the June lows, we've got a possible wave one to the upside, a possible wave two to the downside, and a wave three here can take us to $3,000 plus, uh, probably even higher because within this third wave in a bullish interpretation, we would have here a wave one, a wave two, which is the corrective wave. And if the 12, 18 level is holding, we should get a third and then also break above the previous wave one high. Yeah, these this high at around 1730 and this high at 2030. These would be important confirmation levels. Um, for now, it's coming down in a wave two um, or possibly something more bearish. We're going to take a look at that. But what you need to understand is that this is the decision point. Yeah? You need to know that below 1218, now that we're getting closer um, and that the market has made the decision that, you know, it, it is either the wave two or we are going to continue with a bear market. So it's it's fairly straightforward now to, to look at the different options. Um, basically only two scenarios we deal with, which is, which is an which is always a situation I like. I don't really like to follow three or four scenarios because it makes um, probability, it, it blurs probabilities. Yeah. Always remember there is no certainty. This is all a stream of probabilities and <laughs> Ethereum is a probability machine. Yeah, there's there's new stuff every day we need to look at and um, while we adjust to the markets. But this is now a great situation to be in because we've got two clear, two clear scenarios. Um, so yeah, wave two coming down. If this one holds, we can say with decent clarity that the bear market low was made back in, in June and we are heading in a bull run. Yeah, we're heading in a bull or at least a more substantial rally. I mean, this could still be an extension of the bear market eventually, but still that that's something we couldn't, couldn't say now. I mean, it's still possible that for example, you do something like this, A wave, uh, B wave, and then a larger C wave, but that would be a one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, something like that. I mean, that's all possible. Um, but that's, it would be too early to talk about that. And also that, that wouldn't really matter. Yeah. Um, so there is no guarantee we go to new all time highs, even if we hold this wave too, but it means a more substantial rally. And then at some point we'll have the next decision point that I'm going to follow for you anyway. Um, but yeah, this is the key level. Now we're going to zoom in in a minute. Yeah. This needs to hold 1218 because, because below the 78.6 retrace, things are going to get, uh, <laughs> spicy. Okay, what is the bearish possibility, which is also still very likely uh, in line with what Bitcoin is doing as well. It's basically the same count that we have for the Bitcoin primary of still making a new low. But as you hopefully know, I always say that, you know, from, from time to time that I don't really like the concept of primary and alternative because people always think that the primary always has to work. Some people tend to try to trade the primary, even though that is an absolutely flawed concept. You should trade what's in front of you. Um, have a, th a strategic thought based on the different possibilities. So the purpose of an Elliott wave analysis or a technical analysis is in, in general is not to definitely predict what the next move is going to be up or down. It is going to show you the probabilities for possible turning spaces 
um, showing you the probabilities for outcomes, the most likely areas of support and resistance, price targets, and so on, but for different scenarios. So that based on the different scenarios, which are probable, and sometimes you have two, sometimes you have three. That's not many, actually, if you consider that the market could theoretically do anything. Okay. So from these two or three scenarios, you need to develop your game plan. It is much more complex than the chart goes up or down. Many people don't understand that, but it is so crucial. Otherwise, you will fail at investing, trading and probably burn your portfolio. You need to understand all of these scenarios in order to build your own game plan. And there is not a game plan that works for everybody. That's why some people are breakout traders. Some people are pullback traders. There are people with a lot of cash flow. There are people with little cash flow. There are people who like more risk. There are people who have who don't like any risk, well, they shouldn't be in crypto at all, but who don't, who can't take any heat. Yeah. So um, there are people who tend to invest in Bitcoin Ethereum. There are people who are more, uh, have more exposure to altcoins. You know, that that's why there is no one size fits all solution. But um, obviously I give you all these different scenarios and the key pivot points so I can assist you in a degree to a degree. But um, eventually it's the market that will decide, but you need to know all these different scenarios in order, it's like playing chess, yeah? You need to think a few steps ahead to make your own moves. So um, at the moment, what I try to say is we only have two now, two two moves that we're watching now, which which is good, um, which gives which makes life, let's say, easier. Okay, so again, this is the one, two, one, two setup possibility, but if we break below 1218, then Ethereum can come back into this region, the $1,000 level, which is, which is basically here these, these lows from June. Why are they so important? They are important because if I draw the FIPS of that low to the wave one high, we have already come down to the 78.6 FIP level in November. And this is the 88.7 FIP level down there. That is really the very last step, um, uh, not step, but the very last um, exit on the motorway here of the bulls. It's actually slightly above the $1,000 level, but it's also a psychological one. If we break below that, it could very well take us below the June lows as well. Uh, Ju yeah, what was that? Yeah, June lows at around 880, and I'm looking at something around 650, 670, yeah? Um, that's why we need to understand, do we hold this area or not? Um, so at the moment, very clearly, there is no sign of a bottom. In fact, I would still, I'm still waiting for that fourth and the fifth wave. From that point of view, my analysis hasn't changed. It's just that the third wave seems to be quite an extended one. Yeah. So um, in the last few videos we talked about, we're still waiting for a fourth and a fifth probably, but so far that hasn't uh, happened. So the market is just extending this third wave. So I'm still waiting for the fourth and the fifth um, as a likely option at least, but uh, so far it hasn't started yet. So what I'd like to do, just look at the micro count also here like Bitcoin on the way down we've got here the possible one two setup yeah after we um peaked here in a b wave yeah i might actually also like bitcoin uh, or is that does that sit in a good i might actually move that sideways here slightly i did that for bitcoin as well uh, that makes it uh, easier now to count this and probably in a, in a more likely way to count this decline in the c wave we're look, currently looking at the c wave of wave three and then here I would say we probably had here a leading diagonal in a wave one, moved up in two. This was a very long extended three and we did a four and now we might be heading down in a five. But also here now, um, momentum seems to be increasing again. Next key level I'd be watching out for is the 1330 level. Um, that is the 61.8 retracement, very important level. It would be interesting to see if we see any effect there. But for now, it looks like we're currently finishing off the um, the fifth wave here to the downside. After that, I would expect, <laughs> as long as this fifth wave doesn't extend as well, I would expect after this fifth wave, when it's finished, yeah, when it's finished, um, a larger bounce in the fourth wave. Or, I mean, maybe the low is then already in, yeah, and we turn around. But either way, I would expect either upside in an impulsive wave, but then we need to see the, the market to show an impulse or here just the fourth wave. So what are targets here uh, for this fifth wave now? So it seems to become an extended fifth. So what we can do is we can take the length of the wave one, go to the high of the wave four, and I'm looking at here the 1.618 extension possibly as a first target. 
okay, we reached that already, yeah, but it doesn't, it might be finished, but we certainly reacted to it. It's a bit too early, but that's one level to watch, 1378. Wouldn't be surprised at this stage to break it because we already, um, we've already gone through it briefly, but certainly reacted to it. So you can see the market is respecting those FIPS. Um, another way of measuring target would be to take the length of one through three, go to the high of the four. And then we're looking at the next target would be 1349, the 61.8 extension. And then we've got the 61.8 retracement at 1330. These are the key levels and then 1289. Yeah, but that would be a, a significant extension. Then we'd probably would need a recount because the way five would get way, get way too long. But yeah, these are the, these are the levels to watch and um, I mean, in a, in a, what well, some people might ask, what would be the bearish count? The bearish count would be probably here a wave one to the, well, instead of an A wave, we would probably have a wave one. This would be a wave two, and we probably are now in a third wave, similar to this. It's just a matter of how how long does it extend down, then a four and a five, and that could take us to that one thousand dollar level. Something to watch. If that impulsive price action to the downside continues much longer. And there is a risk of breaking 1218 and we do it eventually then we have to swap to the um also to the bearish micro count and cannot focus anymore on holding the possibility of holding a wave two again here just the message we have to hold on what's in front of the, uh, we have to look at what's in front of you what's in front of us so this is the area uh, for now again and that's that's been sort of the the narrative throughout this week um there is not yet a bottom in place yeah we have no proof or evidence at all yeah, there haven't been really been any rallies and all movements to the upside have been in three waves. So um, we need to remain focused on the downside as also here the trend line helped us understand there is no positive reaction yet. But this is an area that is to watch for a possible reversal. But does it reverse? Only the market will decide that. Yeah, I can certainly tell you that the move down is faster then I would like to see it in this wave too. But then again, the market in crypto market is very dynamic. So we shouldn't necessarily base it on that, but it's certainly faster than it would be ideal. I would rather like to see momentum slow down on these waves to the downside. But you know how crypto is. They like to max things out sometimes, yeah, crypto. Crypto likes to max things out and make things extremely difficult and make all people uh, come to the conclusion that things couldn't turn around anymore and then they do so we can only trade and analyze what's really in front of us um, that's where we are with ethereum you should now be very much aware of the different key support levels targets invalidation points and maybe one more thing to add if we now rally impulsively above the wave four high which is here 1444 then we can say that either a more substantial rally is starting or the, the way four here. And uh, when that happens, I might I might do a few micro changes to the chart because this wave one looks now very short. Um, oh, sorry, this uh, this wave two uh, looks very short to a possible fourth wave, which might be coming. So I might adjust things a little bit, but for now those targets all stand and um, they are the key levels. Okay, that's my update about Ethereum. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.